Hey, I'm RC, and this is the episode 8 about creating a game in HTML5. Um, so if you haven't watched the last episodes, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. Um, so first, what we will do with our game is to fix the out of bound problem. So if, if we go out of bound, well, we are pretty much invincible. And another thing you might have noticed is that um, our mouse is not um, in the middle of our player. It's like in the top left corner, even though um, the code says it should be in the middle. And this is because our Canva is not um, positioned at the zero, 00 spot. So if you can see right here, there's a gap between the start of the, of the browser and the start of the um, Canva. Okay, so in order to fix that, we will need to change our on mouse move um, function. So right now we simply take um, the client X and Y and we say, hey, the player is equal to that value. Um, but actually we will need to remove this little gap, which is eight, um, exactly eight pixel. Um, this is art coded. This is the easy way to do it. You can find eight by just trial and error. The real code is um, this. So we get the Canva, then we get the bounding client rectangle, and then we get the left. Uh, I don't really want to explain it. You can just put eight or you can put this um, whole thing. Both will do exactly the same thing. So next we will try to fix the issue um, with out of bound. So right there what we do is that we say, hey, the player X is directly equal to the mouse X. Uh, but we should be doing a little um, testing is the mouse within the um, rectangle. What we will do is if the mouse X is below zero, then the mouse X becomes zero. If the mouse X was bigger than the width, then the mouse X will be equal to the width. And we will apply the same logic for, um, what's called the, um, the Y, bigger than height, I equal height. Okay, so with this, um, this will prevent our um, rectangle to go out of bound. But as you can see, we can still be halfway out of bound. And this is because we are not considering the width of the player. Um, so in order to fix that little issue, it's actually if it's um, smaller than the width divided by two. And if it's bigger than the width minus the player width two, there we go. And if it's the case, then this, and it should be width um, minus this, we put height, height, minus height, and minus height. So if we save and go back here, now our player really cannot go out of bound, taking into consideration its width. And if we want to change the width, for example, in our player, let's say we put height of 40, everything will adjust automatically. So we cannot go out of bound. Okay, so what we will do next is that right now in order to create an enemy, this is all what we have to do, we need to specify the ID, the X, the Y, the speed, the width, the um, height. It's a lot of stuff and it would be great to be able to generate it with just calling a function and those value would be randomly generated. So this is what we will do. So we will create a function called randomly generate enemy. This function will not take any parameters. It will auto randomly generate them. So we need to generate the um, the x, we need to generate the um, y, the height, the width, um, the id, id, the speed x, and the speed y. So there is a function in um, JavaScript called mathrandom. And this function, mathrandom, returns a number between um, 0 and 1. So it can be 0, it can be 0 0.5, it can be 0. Point whatever, and up to 1. So what we will do here, we want to generate a random value for the x. So we will do math random times width. 
So let's say that the math random is um, 0 0.5, so it will appear at the um, middle of the screen. If it's, um, I don't know, 0. Point, whoops, this, then it will appear a bit more to the left and etc. So this is what we will do here. We will also do that for the y, for the height. Um, now for the height, um, we'll need to find something a bit better because if the math random is zero, um, then we are kind of screwed. We cannot use something like that. So um, let's say it will be 10 plus math random times 10. So and in the minimum, this will be zero and the height will be 10 and at most the height will be um, whoops this will be 1 so the maximum height will be um, 20 so let's just take this actually let's make it a bit bigger 30 30 so this is between um, 10 and 40 now for the ID we can simply say math random and it will be a different ID every time now for the speed, let's say five plus math random times five. And same thing for the speed x. And finally, we call our method. So enemy with the id, with the x, y, speed x, speed y, with and height. Okay, so now with that new function, we can replace those with just randomly generate an enemy three times. And now keep in mind that uh, we are calling this function before actually creating it. So we will need to take this and put it back there. Oops. So let's just save and check how it looks. So there we go, we got our um, three enemies. If we refresh, the enemies will have different shapes and speed and stuff like that. So it, it's randomly generated. Okay, so now one thing I want to add is that as the time goes, more and more enemies are added into the game in order to make it a bit more challenging. Um, so in order to do that, we will need to introduce a new variable, which is the frame count. So the frame count will start as zero, and every time the game is updated, we will increase that value by one. So we will go in our update loop and simply say um, plus one. By the way, this is exactly the equivalent of frame frame count plus plus if you remember correctly um, and then keep in mind that our game runs at 25 frames per second um, if you check here every 40 millisecond we call the function update so if you did the maths it's um, 25 frames per second so let's say that um, if the frame count is equal to 100 so after four seconds we will call um, randomly generate enemy there we go. And let's say that after eight seconds, we will want to add the other enemy. And after 12, so every four seconds, we want to add an enemy. Um, so we'll do something like this, then like that. So as you can see, there is probably a better way to do that because if we want to add every four seconds, we will need to um, copy that forever pretty much. So there's something in maths you may or may not be aware of. It's called the modulo. So what the modulo is, it's the rest of the division. So let's say you got um, 11 modulo 5. This will be equal to 1 because there's 1 left over if you do um, 11 divided by 5. If you round it, it will be 2, but not exactly 2. It's 2 and there's a leftover of 1 and this is that 1. So if it was 12, then it would be 2. Um, 13, it will be 3. 14 would be 4 and 15 would be zero because we can divide 15 by five. So the modulo is very useful for periodic things um, such as this one. So we want to call something every four seconds. So every time you have these, these the wording every X seconds, then you will need to use a modulo. So let's say that at the beginning, frame count plus plus. So the frame count is, let's say, zero. It gets increased to one. One modulo 100 is not equal to zero. It's equal to one. Then it will become two, three, four, five, six. And it's only when it will reach 100 that this will be true. And then 101 is not equal to zero. It's equal to one. And the next time will be when it will be 200, which is exactly what we want. So um, this will be called every four seconds. 
Okay, so now let's just check how it looks in the real game. Um, so as you can see at the beginning, there is only three enemies, and after four seconds, there is a fourth one um, that spawns, and after another four seconds, there's another one, etc. Now there's a little problem at this point, is that if we die, if we lose all, all, all our life, um, the enemies are still there, so it becomes pretty much impossible <laughs> as it goes. So um, what should happen is that when you die, um, all the enemies are removed, and except three of them, and um, the score is reset to zero. So this is what we'll do. So clear the board um, when you die. So right there, this is what happened um, when you die. So if the HP is less than zero, then we say the console log, the timeout, and we put back the HP to this and here we will need to add the clear enemy function. Okay, so there are many ways to do that, but first what I will do is to take this part of the code and put it outside of the loop. So this is a loop, a for loop, and normally this kind of stuff you don't want it to be inside a loop because it can cause problem. So we'll just put it there. The code is exactly the same than what it was before. We have changed no functionalities. Um, so what I will do is create a new function called start new game. And what this will do is that it will reset the HP, reset the timer, it will reset the frame count, it will clear the list of enemies, so um, empty objects, and we will also randomly generate three enemies. And um, here instead of just putting this code here, we could just say, hey, start a new game, which makes a lot more sense than what we add, and this goes here. So when the HP is less than zero, we'll start a new game. Okay, so now let's um, just check how it looks. So if we refresh the page, we got our three enemies. After four seconds, um, a fourth one will spawn. If we die, then the wall grid will be um, regenerated and um, we will start back with only three enemies. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it and um, don't forget to click the annotation on the screen if you want to check out the next episode.